the Patriots are one step closer to figure out what the heck they're going to do at offensive tackle. So they mm-hmm. re-signed Lee Adrian Waddle, but Cameron Fleming is signed away with the Cowboys. And uh, this is addition to the signing of Matt Tobin, 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 uh, Tobin earlier this yeah. offseason. Tobin, uh, do, is this their solution, you think? Yeah, this is it. I think they – so they weren't going to re-sign both Fleming and Waddle. It was going to be one or the other. They just probably weren't going to have the money to do both. And they have a lot of young guys that I'm sure they want to develop. So – I think they, they end up going with Waddle, who was ahead of Fleming on the depth chart uh, earlier this season before he got hurt. Fleming ended up starting six of the final seven games, but Waddle was the guy who stepped in once Marcus Cannon went out in week eight and did a good job on, on Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Vaughn Miller. And then later in the season, Waddle was dealing with ankle and knee injuries, so he just really wasn't uh, 100%. And that's an issue with him. He's had some durability concerns throughout his career, but I think they do like uh, his potential, if healthy, um, he's still pretty young. He's 26. Uh, Fleming's only 25, despite having played four years in the league. So they're both young. Both should be ascending. I thought Belichick really liked the depth they had last year with both of those guys. So right now, to me, the plan is Waddle's probably going to be penciled in as the starter at left tackle. And I wouldn't be shocked if they went out and drafted somebody in the top two rounds, drafted another offensive tackle. So you, you have – Waddle, you have a, a rookie that you draft. You have Tony Garcia. You have a bunch of guys at the end of the roster, some flyers on Cole Crossan, who was a UDFA last year, Andrew Jelks, who was a, a talented college player who's dealt with a series of knee injuries, hasn't played since 2014. So those guys are probably long shots. But I think if you draft someone high, you, you put him with Garcia, you have Waddle back in the fold, you're at least giving yourself some numbers and the hope that, you know mostly what Waddle is, but the hope that you can build a, a younger player to, to develop uh, down the road. And I just think it's – I'm sure you probably agree. It's probably unrealistic to expect Tony Garcia to start next year after having missed his entire rookie season yeah. with a, a pretty severe illness. We don't he, – he was skinny to begin with. We don't know how much he weighs right now. He might not just – he might not be in, in shape to be a starting left tackle at this point. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, what's the long-term plan with him? Because from everything that, that seems to be coming out, it's like Tony Garcia is not the guy for 2018. But what about 2019, yeah. 2020? Yeah, I think that's possible. And I think that's why they'll not only keep Garcia and obviously try to develop him, but I think you'll take another shot high in the draft, excuse me, on another guy. Because um, it's just a position that you absolutely need bodies at. And, and Marcus Cannon has been very good at right tackle, but he's not really young anymore. And, and Waddle has shown flashes, but he's been pretty injury prone. So you want to develop some young guys behind them. So to me, the plan for 2018 is, is going to be Waddle and Cannon. And then going forward 2019, it's maybe Garcia, maybe someone they draft. Hell, maybe if Cole Crossan is really good in training camp, maybe he works himself into that rotation. So there's, um, I think that they're just going to try to load up on young guys there and then see who make it an open competition and see who works out the best.